Happy New Year, and welcome to The Last Video Store. I'm your host, Bud Hattonfield, and on this episode, we're talking about one of the greatest horror movie remakes of all time. We talk in 1988's The Blob. This is where The Blob was filmed, in a small town in Louisiana named Abbeville, which is just one town away from where we live in Lafayette. The Blob was directed by Chuck Russell, where him and his co-writer, Frank Darabont, uh, working together a year before this, they had did A Nightmare on Elm Street 3, The Dream Warriors, and thought it was time to remake one of the greatest horror sci-fi movies from the 1950s. A couple years earlier, other studios had put out the remakes of The Fly and The Thing, so this was kind of started the wave of the remakes. This movie starred Shawnee Smith, Kevin Dillon, Jeffrey DeMunn, Candy Clark, and had some scenes with great character actors such as Art LaFleur and Bill Mosley. The movie was released on August 5th, 1988. So in this movie, they decided to make some changes where in the original, the blob was pretty much an alien terrestrial from outer space coming down to earth wreaking havoc, where in this one, it is a government made biological weapon. A lot of the structures in downtown Abbeville are exactly the same as they were in the movie from the 80s. So it's nice to see that several things have survived over 30 years. And this is the old theater that sadly is no longer a theater. And this is where we see the sheriff's character played by Jeffrey DeMunn when he first talks to Flag and congratulates him for recently having a birthday. So the film starts off in a small town and one of our main characters, Flag, played by Kevin Dillon, he's, he's kind of a troubled character, a teenager. He had just turned 18 and had some issues with the local police or sheriff's office in the, in the small town. And the sheriff, played by Jeffrey DeMond, is out watching him and he just kind of has a, a hard time, but he's a pretty cool character. At the same time, we get the football game where Paul and Shawnee Smith's character, he asks her out on the dates, and of course she accepts it. And you think at this time that Paul is going to be our star because he, he's kind of somewhat of the Steve McQueen's character from the first movie. But the twist is that Paul gets killed in a very violent manner. In the scene where the blob takes him over and Paul's in there and the blob's just all over him and it sees it shooting up his face. And actually all the goo and it, it's kind of like sex lubricant that gets shoved up his nose and his mouth. So he's, he's really freaking out at this point because I cannot feel good. So we get a lot of awesome, cool, special effects, violent kills. This blob is... Definitely a lot more menacing and predatorial, more than the first film was just some some jello. Uh, the cool kills we get, we get the little rapey character uh, who's Paul's friend who pretty much gets Erica Alaniac's character drunk. And he goes to touch some boobies and the blob's in there. Unfortunately, Erica Alaniac's character gets killed, but, you know, we, we get some justice for that. That dude can't be, can't be going around touching boobies, man. Gotta get consent. Uh, so they try to enjoy their date. They bump into this homeless character who, a lot like the first movie, the homeless character was the first person to, to see the meteor hit and find the meteor and discover the blob was inside the meteor. So for some reason, he takes a stick and he's fucking around poking it, not supposed to, and the blob gets on his hand. So as he's going around freaking out trying to get help, that's when he bumps into Flag, and then eventually Paul and Shawnee Smith's character, so they take him to the, the local doctor's office, and this is where we start getting some, some havoc wreaked. Um, the blob slowly 
forms from his hand. And the next time we see him, when he uncovered the blanket, his whole body is pretty much all ate up from the chest down. So that got to be a really shitty way to go. Then Paul character gets eaten. Like I said, it kind of tricks you. You think we're going to be following this dude, but it's not. So police gets killed. Some some reason flag gets blamed for it and the police want to bring him in like what do you think he did he just carries around this this ass in his back pocket that's going to eat up the, the can man uh yeah so we got these guys in these white suits that's coming around uh poking into the town putting people into panic and you know shoving them off into the the town hall and the blobs just going around just fucking everything up uh it eats Candy Clark's character's little uh, dishwasher dude. Then it gets her in a phone booth, and we saw that it got the sheriff and, you know, all pretty much the authority. Everything in this town is fucked. But they discover that for some reason, when they're in the freezer hiding, that the cold is what it kind of stops it. This place, you gotta come now. Oh, wait a minute, Steve. Tell us what happened. Well, I'm trying to tell you. Now, this thing had killed the doc. Well, what was it? Stop with it, kid. But it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a mass that keeps getting bigger and bigger. It... Every one of you watching this screen, look out. Because soon, very soon, the most horrifying monster menace ever conceived will be oozing into this theater. places all over the spectrum and in, in a good way we get like i said some very violent kills we get a kid that gets killed and a bunch of military guys in suits and pretty much we find out that this blob is a piece of chemical warfare that was created by the government you know, like it's something they would never do so we, we, we get a lot of justice. Good thing we don't get any animal kills, which I always thought that was very mean-spirited. I, I never really cared for that whatsoever. Like, it was cool that you killed a kid, but at the same time, it's like, ah, do we have to do this? Or could we just, you know, kill all the assholes in the world that are portrayed by these characters? Um, Garden Tool Massacre, I believe the name of the movie within the movie was based off a toolbox murder, which one of our original stars was in from the original Blob movie. Uh, 
it's just perfect, man. It's, it's a piece of just horror movie cheese. That's the best kind. You can put it on everything. This movie was always on the sci-fi channel growing up, like every weekend or every holiday. It's, you know, 1988's The Blob, and it was there. So check it out. If you haven't seen this movie before, shame on you. It's great. I love it. Out of 10 stars, I would have to give it eight just because. Um... We get good actors, good kills, great special effects, great writing, awesome directing, cool soundtrack. The the song at the end, Brave New Love by the band called Alien, which is cool. Uh, even though the love wasn't an alien in this one, but you, you get what I'm saying. So uh, you can find this movie pretty much everywhere. They have streaming and you can, you can rent it every once in a while. It'll be on Amazon for free or one of the little apps, but buy it. Shout Factory slash Scream Factory put out a very great boot, uh, Blu-ray of it a couple years back. Uh, you can find uh, the first one on DVD or Blu-ray. Criterion had put it out on both DVD and Blu-ray, like, like I said. And then we had Beware of the Blob, which was also called Son of the Blob, which was directed by Larry Hagman. I believe it was J.R. from uh, Dallas. So that's, uh, that's a thing within a thing. Dale Close's, well, the actor Dale Close, who played the Reverend, he was in Beware of the Blob, and he was dating somebody who was in the first Blob, so he, he was a good, awesome character actor in a lot of good things. Uh, he had died of emphysema 10, 15 years after this movie was, was put out. I remember he was in The Untouchables as the little Weasley uh, guy who was working for Al Capone's character, or Al Capone. But uh, check out The Blob. Great movie. you love it. Thank you for checking out this week's episode i really hope you like and enjoy and if you do please like and subscribe i do these movies for you all just to keep the the video store alive and all these not so well-known horror movies they deserve to be watched for generations on and on so like i said earlier happy new year i wish you the best i love you all have a good day